anything? Okay, there we go. Turned up the microphone. Now people can probably hear me. All right, so just uh, real quick start on uh, or explanation of what I'm going to do. Uh, yesterday, is it yesterday? No, the day before. Saw somebody at a meetup build a Twitch game that you could play through Twitch. So you just go in and chat and it would control the game and you'd have your own player and it would drop a little ball down and you'd get points for it. And uh, I thought it was pretty interesting and I just wanted to build something similar. So we're going to put together a quick uh, gambling game. So everybody in the Twitch channel, I, I linked it on the YouTube video too. Everybody on the Twitch channel can just uh, go in, have some money and bet and then it'll roll and pick up pick the winners and we'll use our roulette table and um you know just give the winners money and take the money away from the people that lose and uh, say who wins so i want to get started with the most important part which is just some twitch integration and i looked at a couple different twitch integration options and the one that was demoed at the meetup seemed to be the simplest and just works so I was going with this. There's a Twitch IRC Unity. It's two simple little files, an example and a single code file that handles all of the actual stuff. So I just download it and pull it in. And now I tried, like I said, I tried some of the other ones and they didn't really work with Unity, at least the ones that I tried right away. There was gonna be some work to convert them down to older version of C Sharp standard. So I just went with this and this thing handles everything that I needed to do. So I've got the uh, two files here. I'm just gonna take these and copy them into this empty project. And I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on chat too, just uh, if I miss it, just send it again. All right, so we got these two files. Actually, let's create a scripts folder first and put these two in here. And let me know if there's anything wrong with the stream too. If anybody sees any problems, uh, can't hear, can't see, anything like that. Hopefully it's all good. This is the first time I'm trying to stream to two different sources at once. All right, so we've got the scripts in here. There we go, should show up any second. And I'll just switch over to the scene view for a moment. And now I'm just gonna create an empty game object to hold the, uh, the Twitch script. Oh wait, where did my scripts go? Oh, okay, I put them in the scenes folder, not the scripts folder, there we go. So I need to create a thing to hold that Twitch IRC object. Create an empty game object and we'll add that Twitch IRC component. And then here it just takes an uh, OAuth key, a channel name, and a nickname. So for the channel name, it's just Unity 3D College. For the nickname, I don't remember if this mattered at all, but I'm just going to call it a GameBot. And then the OAuth key, you actually get online. Um, here, let's see. If you search for Twitch password gen or just where to get your Twitch key, you can hit connect with Twitch. You'll get this, whatever, twitchapps.com slash TMI. Hit that and you'll get a key. And I need to uh, regenerate that key, get a new one. Disconnect. So I'm just making myself a new key real quick. And then I'm going to secretly paste that in off screen. There we go. One second. Drop that in and done. All right. So now I've got my key in there. <laughs> the beard of the game. Nice. All right. So we've got a new key in. We're good to go. Now I wanna take a real quick look at the example script and just show what it does. And then we're just gonna hook up our own version of it. All right, so we pull this in and you see here, it's got an on chat message received. And then it's registering for that way down here, starts at the bottom. What it does essentially though is it finds the IRC component. It adds a listener to this event, this message received event and then that this uh what is it on chat message received gets called whenever a chat message appears and then this um if i remember right it was actually throwing some errors so if we just get rid of all that and do like a debug dot log of msg 
and save and then go put this in so let's create an empty game object just drop the chat example on it yeah, okay, come on let me let me drag there we go now when we go to the console window if everything's working when I hit play and I go over to the uh, the twitch chat so I got the twitch channel open in another screen I should be able to type a message over here and see it appear and I did not see it appear so oh oh I know why it's because the uh, twitch chat example is looking for the twitch IRC on the actual game object and I'm gonna change this to find object of type and no, we're gonna get rid of all this code in here in just a few minutes I just want to show how it actually works or that it actually works um, oh something is adding that oh it's the twitch chat example must have a require component let's go remove that too there we go so that was adding on a second component that didn't have my OAuth key and or my channel so it wasn't going to the right one all right so let's remove that thing and try again now it should actually get the one that's over there that has my actual key on it okay so get that up let's type a message and chat and I just typed the number five and you can see here that the uh, the message showed up down here in the log and it's just uh, let me get this smaller I got to shrink one of these screens so it can stream okay you can see I just typed in five there and if I type like uh, hello you see we get the the message there that's the actual text right there um, I think this is the channel and the username unfortunately my username and channel are the same so it's a little confusing there um, but you can see it all all the info is getting logged I'm just gonna move that back off the screen uh, it might be I'm not sure on the frame rate I'm using a what is it restream to stream to two different sources at once so that way you can do the twitch stuff and YouTube at the same time uh, but it does seem kind of laggy oh yeah look at that and it looks uh, super pixelated interesting I don't know why it looks so bad hopefully it clears up quick um, it's even dropping on the twitch stream oh, I'm hoping that goes away because I have no idea what's causing it okay, let's just check OBS settings real quick um, stream settings all seems fine yeah I see that it looks like the whole stream is frozen I have no idea why it's going so slow like this it looks a little bit better in twitch but it's still running terrible in here at least in the video let's see just turned up the bit rate a little bit maybe that'll help I don't know yeah oh looks a little smoother still pixelated but let's see if that goes away oh never mind my quality kicked down to 1440 okay cool that's looking better thank you all right so let's actually um set this thing up now and start making the game so first thing I want to do is replace the twitch chat example with something that just reads in chat gets a username and a number that they bet on you know what actually first let's do something visual let's pull in the roulette table so I want a roulette just search on here there was one free one if I remember right so that way anybody who wants to do it can just follow along I probably would have grabbed a uh, a spinning one if there was a, a nice free one that actually spun so we can make the thing spin around and do some cool stuff but I think this will work fine for this so here we go pull in this pack common casino bundle all right, and then I'm gonna go into here and find what do we got prefabs let's take the roulette table drop it out and then I'll take the main camera and I'm just gonna move it up over the roulette table like that get it in position adjust the X rotation to 90 and set this to what's gonna be 180 and then I want to switch over from perspective to orthographic and pull in that size just gonna want to get this so that it looks right in 1920 by 1080 so gonna select 1920 
and then we should be able to drag these around just kind of get this thing lined up so that the table is in the middle and as big as we can fit it Let's see oh right about there that's good enough so we've got a table in there now perfect now I'm gonna save my scene and now we'll do some code so like I said I think we need to split out these chat messages first and then figure out the username and the number that they want to bet on. What, what I'm going to set it up as is be able to type in the number and then you'll place whatever one poker chip on that number as a bet and then continue on. So let's see, for this we need a new script and I think it's going to be, uh, let's, uh, let's just create something and name it something this uh chat mess or chat controller that'll work for now and this is going to be responsible for reading in that chat so first we're going to need a reference to the twitch irc object so say oh, actually i don't think we need a reference to it we just need to find this so to find object type twitch irc dot on or wait no dot message received event that's right dot add listener uh, handle message received. I think I spelled that wrong. Generate the method. I'm going to clean up all that formatting. Get rid of all this crap. We don't need an update either. And in here, remember, this is where we're getting that message that logs out. I'll move all that too. Get this nice and, nice and small. This message receives. Or it looks like, uh, do we have the message down here? It looks like this. So if I copy this message over, go back into the code, you can see kind of what we're dealing with. It's gonna be, ah, what, my copy didn't work. Let's try that again. Let's just copy this part right here. And can I paste, there we go, cool. So this is what we're gonna get back, or what we're gonna get every time somebody sends a message. And we just need to figure out their username, which we can pull from right here and then the message, which we can pull from right there at the end. So we can just do some really simple string manipulation. Um, I think I already have this part written up, so we can just kind of pull it over. It's nothing complicated, but it'll make sure that I don't typo it. Let me find it real quick. It's our message handler. All right, so let's see. First, um, let's just log the message. So do debug.log arg0. And I'm going to rename this to message. And then we want to get the name out of there. So the name is going to be starting from position one, basically. Zero would be this character. So we'll go one to whatever the index of that first exclamation mark is. So we'll do, uh, here, let's actually just make these variables. So I'll say int name start equals one. And then we'll do int name end equals message dot index of and then we need to give it the exclamation mark so this is going to give us the index in the string for the start which is character one right here up to and the end is right there then we'll just do string username equals message dot substring name start which is really just one but having a variable there kind of helps and then we do name end minus name start oh i did not put an end there So this should get us out our username. Now the other thing we want to get is the message that they're sending. Okay, wait. Let's um, let's call this incoming message. Or no, let's call this text. I don't know what I want to call this, but I don't want to call it message because I want to use the variable message for the actual thing that they sent in. Uh, okay, so the next thing we need to get is the index of this colon. So it'd be the first index of a colon. So say int uh, message start equals text dot index of, and we give it a colon. It's also a single quotes here because we're just looking for a single character. And then for the end, it's just the end of the the string. So we can say string message equals text dot substring, and we'll start at message start. And then end at text dot length minus message start because 
it's not really an ending point it's the length so it's the full length of the thing minus at wherever we started so imagine if this was like at 95 totally made up number and this was 100 we'd grab five characters after that point i have no idea what the actual indexes are so this should get us our username and our message and then we can just log that out so let's say debug.log and we'll just do a string dot format and give it parameter zero. Ooh, I should switch to C sharp four so we can do inline ones. That'd be better. Or whatever. Uh, so it'll be mess or number or parameter zero said parameter one, and then we'll give parameter zero will be the username, and one will be the message. So it should say like that I said whatever I typed in or whatever. So let's save that. Go back into the editor, and let's create a chat message come on let me type handler and we'll add that component oh it's a chat controller ah forgot what I named it there we go so now I've got a controller here and it should log out when somebody says something or log the message of it uh, yeah the live stream should just be up later I didn't plan on taking it down all right, so let's try typing in the word yes. I typed in yes, and oh, somebody else is typing. Okay, um, well, I'm getting messages from that one. That's not what I want. I am not getting the chat controller message. It's not saying somebody, oh wait, it is. It's just wrong. Oh, okay, I see the problem. So if you look right here, it says that I said, and then the whole message. I think it's because if we look here in the code, let's take another quick dive. Message start is going at the first colon. And if you look right here, the first colon's at zero. So we need to adjust this a little bit and just pass in an index to start at. And we, as long as it's a number greater than zero, it's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna put 10, whatever. I think a, a one would be good as well. So now it should actually get the start of the message. Instead of being here, it's gonna be here. All right, let's see. I want to make sure that I remove this chat example too because I don't want to clutter up the logs. Save and play one more time. And now we should get uh, get messages again. Frame is dropping again? It looks okay to me so far. If it gets bad again though, um, let me know. I'm going to keep, keep an eye on it. There we go. Oh, back to normal. Perfect. Somebody's t typing in there. And there, look. I said test except we still have the colon there so let's uh strip that out as well so if we go back into here what we can do is just increment message start so instead of the index of this which is going to be right here we want to do the index of it plus one so that'll get us from from this point to this point there we go let's save i'll just hit play one more time and we'll make sure that message looks clear type in one two three Oh, oops, I did it a little too early. There we go. So there we go. Unity 3D College said one, two, three. Perfect. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to set up, I think it's going to be betting. So once they say the thing, I'm going to let you pick any number, I guess, from 0 to 36. Just say that, and it's going to count it as a bet. So let's go back into that chat controller. And let's parse out the number that it's being said. So we only want to do something if they actually just say a number. So say int number to bet on. And then I'm going to say if int dot try parse message comma out number to bet on. So this is going to return true if the message can be converted into a number. And if it is converted into a number, that number will get set into this uh, number to bet on from line 24. So if that's the case, if we actually just typed a number, then I want to place a bet. And I don't want to do that in here. I want to do that in a new class. So I think I'm going to say um, bet controller dot set bet. And we'll give it a username and the number that they want to bet on. Now we don't have a class for this. So we're just going to create one. I'm just going to go right down here to the end of the file. Say public class bet controller. And we'll make that a mono behavior. 
And then here we'll add in a set bet method. So we'll say public void set bet, which will take a string username and an integer number to bet on. Just want to get this all separated out so this bet controller is responsible for the actual bets and nothing else is. All right, um, now we need to find a bet controller. So let's just copy that, go up to the start, and let's say bet controller equals find object type bet controller. We could turn these into singletons or something else, but I don't really need to. This is going to be pretty simple. There we go. So now we've got it generated. By the way, it's just control period to generate that field. Control period and then enter just auto generated the field. So now we have a bet controller and we have a set bet method on it. Um, when we set bets, I think what we'll do is just keep track of the numbers in a dictionary and all of the people who've bet on that number. So to do that, we'll just make a dictionary, a private dictionary. Oops. And I need to add a using statement for system.collection.generic. And it's going to be of type int. And then the value will be a list of players. And we don't have players yet, but we'll create them. And I'll set equals to new. Um, Dictionary list of player. Here we go. I got to do that because player doesn't exist. Now let's create a player too. So make a public class player. Uh, player is going to have a username and a number of credits or amount of money. So we'll do public. Oops. And I'll just call it credits. Now I'm going to move some of these out into their own files now. So just do control period and select move type to player.cs there we go and do the same for the bet controller just get these kind of cleaned up and into their own what what happened there let's try that again oh i didn't give this thing a name sorry uh bets that's why it didn't generate i was just totally blind there all right now we'll move that to its own file too and then let's go back into the bet controller so bet controller would just be responsible for keeping track of the bets that are placed and then maybe firing off some events when a bet is placed so that other things UI elements and all that can register and respond so let's see in set bet we want to look to see if the player exists if not we're gonna to need to create them and then we need to add a bet huh, seems easy enough so first we'll say if bets dot contains key number to bet on is equal to false so if nobody's bet on that number before we'll just say bets dot add we're going to add a new entry to the dictionary the key will be the number again and then the value is just going to be a new list of players then we want to well find the player hello mint arcade I'm trying to lightly watch chat while we're doing this um so we want to find the player and we should probably make a player controller too. So say player player equals I'll do player controller dot get or create player and we'll pass in a username. So this will just be responsible for creating a player or pulling them back out. And then we can always go in and add in some persistence stuff so you could store off player data. You know, maybe in a file or a database or some somewhere that you want so that it's persistent and when people come back they can still keep playing so let's uh, make a player controller let's do public class player controller and I think this is just gonna be a simple simple static uh, static class static method so yeah, let's just make it static so we can't accidentally instantiate it and this is gonna have a list of players so I'll give it a private static list of player I call it players and initialize it to a new list and then we'll make a public static player and it's gonna this is gonna be our out here actually let's just do this we'll click on this hit control period and hit generate to just create it there we go slightly quicker than typing it all out so this is gonna get us a player from the player list or create a new one so first thing I'll do is just check to see if there's a player that matches I'll just do bar player equals players dot first up here first uh, not fist first there we go or default and hit control period to add the using system link and then we'll do T 
and with the lambda and we want to check that the username oops, equals username so this is just gonna give us back the first player that matches the username or null if none match and then we'll say if player is null so if player hasn't been created with this username before then we need to create a new one so say player equals new player and let's just auto initialize the values username is going to be the username that's passed in and credits will be some starting credits so let's just make a constant named starting credits and I'll generate a field for that control period and choose generate field not property and we'll go to it and let's just set this to um, I'm going to start it at 100. There we go. And let's make it a const. So it can't change. We can't accidentally update it or anything. All right. Then we just need to add our player to the players list. So do players.add player. And then after we're done with that, we'll return back the player. So if we did find the player, remember this isn't going to happen. We're just going to skip right over and return it. If we didn't find it, we're going to create the new player and add them to the list and then return them. All right, let's go back. Let's see where were we? we were in our chat controller. So no, we were in our bet controller. Okay. Yeah, and I need to move player controller to its own file. There we go. So select that, move it to its own file. That's where I was getting confused. Thought I was in bet controller when I was in player controller. And now I can remove the extra using statements and clean that up a little bit. All right, so we're getting the player. And now we need to uh, make their actual bet. Well, first I want to check to see if player.credits is less than or equal to zero. I just want to return because we can't bet if we don't have any money. Um, and then we will look at our bets. Well, let me think. We're already getting the list. Um, actually, I think what we can do is just say bets.add and then, or no, not bets.add. It'll be bets number to bet on. So this is going to get the list here. Let's see. Let's spell it out. List of player players betting on this number. I'm trying to make it really explicit what we're getting here. So this is that list of players. That's this right here in the bets for the number. So if it's like number four, it's the list of all the players that bet on number four. So this is that list and all we need to do is add the player to that list so we're adding the player to the list of people that have bet on whatever number is passed in here um, after that we just need to take away a credit we're just gonna allow them to bet one for now so just do player dot take credit um, make take credits even though it's only gonna be one no take take credit one there we go, and we'll generate a method here, and this will just say credits minus minus. Now we could just subtract it there, but I think uh, I wanna make this private, and then maybe update some UI elements or something later, so I wanna have a path for it that's really obvious. I don't wanna put anything into the, uh, the property there. All right, so this should take our credit, and then um, I think the next part I wanna do is actually show something on the screen. So right now we've got all this code in here to take a bet, create a player and all that, but nothing's really gonna show up here. So let's um, let's create some text that'll show up on the screen and just you know, say when somebody bets. So first thing I wanna do since I'm creating text is import text mesh pro. So search for text mesh, grab the package and pull that right in. There we go. Almost in. And then we're just gonna create a text that goes along the top. And then um, we'll just show some number of messages in there. And just kinda have those scroll up or scroll past. Uh, Cause the take credit is, uh, yeah, eventually we're just, we could put in a bet value. I just have an, uh, put that in yet because we need to keep track of how much they bet right now it's just um doing a single chip per 
call. So if you bet on it three times, it's just going to put you in that list three times and take away three credits. Um, yeah, I think eventually we could set it up to pick like a, a number and the amount that you want to bet. Just wanted to keep it relatively simple. All right, so Text Mesh Pro is imported. Good. Now let's create a Text Mesh Pro object. So just go to UI. Oh, what? We have an error. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, no. Uh, Text Mesh Pro already has a class named Chat Controller. So let's just rename this. Um, I'm going to call this Twitch Chat Controller. There we go. Now I just need to rename the file so that it matches. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to compile. So it's this one right here. Rename it to Twitch Chat Controller. And my errors have gone away. Perfect. So now I should be able to pull in Text Mesh Pro. Oh, actually, I probably need to do a build. Oh, no, I still have an... Oh, no, 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 what happened? Ah, hold on. This needs to be chat controller. I renamed the wrong one. Uh, and then where's the one that I have? This one right here. This needs to be Twitch chat controller. Sorry, guys. I totally renamed the wrong thing. Actually, I might have renamed them both. Okay, now. Okay, and now I'm missing my using system.link. There we go. Oh, and credits can't be set private because it's initialized in there. Well, it could. We'd have to just change it up just a little bit. All right, now if I can run, we should be able to pull in our text. There we go. Yep, it's running. Now I'm going to create a text mesh pro text. So UI text mesh pro text. And like I said, I want to anchor this on the top with the stretch. Or this one right here. Top and stretch. Uh, I'll pick a different font because I don't really like liberation. So we'll go with the robot. Um, crank up that size a little bit. Oh, that's a little too big. Uh, let's go with like a 72 point font. And then um, let's put a sample message like Jason bet on 14. There we go. So this will be our text that's just going to show, like I said, some number of messages. Let's find that object again. There it is. Oh, let's go to 2D mode. There, there we go. So there's our text object. And I'm going to stretch this out, just make it a little bit taller. So I can go like whatever, a little close to halfway down the screen. I'm thinking right about to there. And after that, it should just kind of scroll up. All right, so save the scene. And oh, I'm going to rename this to Bet's Text and resave the scene. And then we're going to create another script. So here, I'll just add it right on here. I'll just create a new script and I'll call this Bet's Text. It'll just be responsible for updating that text object. Oh, it didn't open the right thing. There we go. Open up Bet's Text. Um, so bets text is going to need here, let's get rid of this all clean up the formatting it's going to need a text reference so I'm going to say tm pro ugu there we go and this will be our text and let's just get rid of that and add a using statement for using tm pro and then I'll create a start I guess I just deleted it but whatever we'll create a new one the text equals get component ug there we go nice little shortcut ug usually finds it so this will get us our text, and then I want to listen to the bet controller for whenever a bet happens, and then update the text. So we'll say find object of type, we'll get the bet controller, and here we'll just say on bet placed plus equals something. Now this doesn't exist, so I'm just going to copy it, go into bet controller, and let's create an event. So we'll say public event action and add a using system statement and here we're gonna need the player and the number that they bet on so it's gonna be a player and an int and it's gonna be named on bet placed and I'll just give it an empty delegate as the default you can just leave it null too because I know I'm gonna hook it up but I just have a habit of adding that there just so if it's ever called and not used it doesn't blow it so on bet placed needs to be called whenever somebody sets a bet so I'll do that right here on bet placed and we'll pass in the player and the number. 
Um, and let's rename this from set bet to place bet. I think that makes more sense as a name for the thing. So now on bets place, they'll get called whenever somebody bets. Our bets text is going to listen to it. Now I'm just going to hit back back and plus equals and then hit tab to auto generate it. Enter. So this will be player and number bet on. So now we've got a text object that's going to get back all this data and then create some text entries. So what we'll do here is create a, let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this less than optimized, but it's going to be nice and simple and just work. So we'll just make a private list of string and I'll call this bet messages equals a new list of string. And let's just mark this private explicitly too. So now we've got a bet messages list. And here we're going to add a message to that list. So I'll say bet messages dot add. And I want to format this. So I'll do string dot format. And it's going to be zero bet on one. And then let's put how much money they have remaining. Two remaining. So these are the parameter indexes. So zero is going to be player dot username. On new lines. So the first one right there will be the username. The next one is going to be the number that they bet on. So that'd be number to bet on. And then index two right here is going to be the amount they have left. So just do player.credits. So now you can see how much money you have left after you bet. That way I can be lazy and not create a, a UI showing how much money you have. Now we've got that added, and I want to make sure that we only have some number of messages here. So I'll say if bet messages that count is greater than um, I, let's make this serialized field max messages. Then we want to remove the first one. So say bet messages dot remove at zero. Now to create an integer for this max messages. Go to it. Let's add a serialized field attribute and give it a default of maybe three. Or four let's go to four this is just the number of messages that will show on the screen at a time so we're adding and whenever we add if we get more than the number of our max we'll just strip out the first one uh, yeah there's no money <laughs> just credits just totally fake credits um, so the next thing we want to do is turn all these messages into a string and update the text right there so we use a string builder for that Spell that wrong. What's going on? Oh, missing using on system.txt. And I'll call this bet string equals new string builder. And then we're just going to loop over each bet message. So do for each tab, 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 bet message in bet messages. And then we want to append a line. So say bet string, not bet message, bet string. This is our string builder. Dot append line and we're just gonna append the bet message so all this is doing is creating a big long string of all the most recent messages you know line by line and then we just say text dot set text and give it bet string and I think we're done because text mesh pros set text will take in a string builder and automatically do it for you so I think we're good now we've got a bet text Thing. Let's get rid of that extra using statement and extra white space. You can zoom out, you can see everything here. So it's pretty simple again, just get the text, get the messages, and scroll the messages up. Just keeping it small, simple, doing one little thing. All right, now let's play. And then if we go into Twitch and start betting, we should see the bets just start appearing if this all works. So I'm in Twitch, I'm going to bet on five. Oh, I got an error. What's the error? Oh, okay, we have oh, two errors. Let's see, handle message received, Twitch chat controller line 30. Um, oh, I didn't add a bet controller to the game. So let's just add that. Now, ideally, we'd probably want to set up something to initialize all of these, but I'm keeping it a little lazy, so we're not doing that right now. Let's just make a bet controller, and we're just gonna keep adding in things to the scene. This is a pretty simple game though, so not something I need to worry about initialization for, I don't think. All right, let's play again. There we go. Now we should no longer get these errors, and I'll try betting on five again. 
and get another error. <laughs> All right, what's the problem? We got a hundred messages on bet placed. What's, where's the problem? Format helper. So on bet placed line 22. By the way, the line number right here, this is the error. All this stuff above it is inside string.format, stuff we don't have the code to. This is the part where the word's blown up in my code. So it's line 22. So that's right here. Text.index of a colon. Why does that not exist? Now I'm a little confused. Here, let's, uh, I'm gonna put a breakpoint there. I'm gonna go back in. So it says that I said five. Wait, now I'm really confused. So I got the message from the chat controller. And then on, oh, wait, wait, on bets placed, bets tech. What did I look at? I was looking at the wrong file, wasn't I? Yeah, whoops. All right, bet controller line 22, there we go. So it's this right here. Number to bet on. Oh, oh, no, no, wait, what? I'm so lost. What did I do wrong? Here, let's, let's just put a break point in here. I definitely broke something and we're gonna figure it out real quick. So we're in there, attached. I'm gonna bet on seven. We should hit our break point. So we go all the way through here. We're setting a bet, number seven. It's that username. Step in, step in. Uh, bets dot add number to bet on so there's nobody has bet on seven yet so there we go seven is now in there we get the player oh player has no credits and I don't have any credits let's, let's, let's change that I'm gonna give myself a hundred credits and bet again on number eight all right and we'll just Go all the way down to place bet. There we go. Now I've got credits. So players betting on this equals bets for eight. Okay. Then we add it and then we take a credit and then we call on bet placed. And then we step in, create a string. Oh, somebody else is betting. Ah. We're getting lots of lots of bets coming in. Now I'm confused. Hold on. Where are we at on the call stack? Am I, did I screw that up? I did, didn't I? What the heck? Okay, it's throwing an exception. That's why, okay. Sorry, so what's happening here is there's a loop in there and if it blows up, it just tries to reprocess the message indefinitely. Um, why am I not able to break or oh, whatever? Let's, uh step into on bet placed because this is where the where the issue is happening so something in my string processing in on bet placed zero one and two so we're getting the message ah okay let's just go to that bets text What? What's wrong with the U? Oh, yep, I see. It started lagging again. Wish I had some idea why that was happening. I need to figure that out and get it fixed. It's really strange. All right, let's try one more bet now. Let's see if I can hit this breakpoint. Apparently I can't. Let's try it right here. Can I hit that breakpoint? Am I not playing anymore? What did I do? Definitely broken something. Let's restart, go back in and bet one more time. So I guess I should probably just read that error message closer. Well, here, let's just get it to happen again. Three, and now I should hit my break point. So we get a message. Oh, so this is just never happening. Zero, one, two, I, I'm so very confused. 
There's nothing wrong with this. Is there? Or create here. Let's split this out. Okay, yeah, I'll have to check the CPU. It seemed weird if it was hitting it, though. This game isn't really doing anything. And Let's see. There we go. Let's pop up Task Manager. Got it there. Oh, yeah. It is pretty high. It's all these damn Chrome windows. Just stop using Chrome. My Unity editor is actually a lot higher than I expected, too. You know, I bet it's this uh, Twitch integration thing. It's probably beating the crap out of it when it's sitting in these uh, exceptions. Just constantly reprocessing the error. So let's call this, uh, let's say string message equals that. And we'll add the message. But I still don't see why this string that format. Here, let me, let me just let me look at my previous code and see. That looks exactly the same. So let's just paste it. So I got a bet placed message. Build. And we'll go back in. And I'm just going to retry this. Because something was wrong. String is in the wrong. Yeah, I'm. I don't know if I typed something wrong. I'm just blind or whatever. But we'll rerun it, and now it should work. There we go. Eight. There. So I just bet on number eight. I've got 99 remaining. Now I bet on number three. I'll leave this running for just a second, so anybody who's on the Twitch stream can just bet as well. Although it looks like the video just kind of stopped again. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there with that damn streaming. All right, so we've got it there. Give it a second to catch up in OBS or whatever it's doing. Yeah, stop playing. See if it kicks back up. Yeah, okay, well, I'll just keep going. All right, so we've got it betting right now. Hopefully the stream just catches up, starts working again. So I've got it betting. Uh, we've got the messages showing up. The bet happens. And once the bets are in, I want to do a switch to a rolling state so that it's uh, you know, spinning here and we're picking a number and then rewarding whoever wins. So to do that, I think we'll just create a game controller here, let's, uh, let me adjust these streaming settings one more time, see if that does anything at all. Okay, that's weird. Updating the streaming settings seems to have fixed it. Which is very strange, I just changed the number. I don't know if it reset something or what. Okay, so we've got, um, uh, I'll restart it in a few minutes too, so everybody can go in and bet. But I'm going to make a game controller that just keeps track of when we're in a betting state and then when we're in a rolling state and maybe when we're doing some rewarding at the end. So I'll create a new script here. Just call this a game controller. It's going to be a really simple game state. We'll open that up. And then, um, let's see, in here we're going to need a couple states and probably a couple of serialized fields. So here, let's get rid of everything, clean that up. Let's add a uh, public enum game state, and I'm gonna have betting, spinning, and payout. Seems good. And then we'll create a game state object. So we'll say public game state, current game state, with a getter and a private setter. So I don't want any other classes changing the state of the game. And then, let's see, we're gonna want a, maybe like a betting duration. So let's add a serialized field for that. Private flow, bet, duration. And I'm gonna copy and make a spin duration as well. And let's set this to maybe 20, and uh, five seconds should be good enough for spinning. Okay, now, let's see, what do we wanna do when we, Start, so we'll do a private void, start. In here, we're gonna set this state to betting. So I call set state. 
and we're going to give it game state.betting and we'll generate that method. So this will, let's see, replace that with state. Current state will change to this. So current game state equals state. And then we're going to do different things based on the current state here. So current game state, we'll do a switch. And we'll just say case dot betting. So if we're betting and we start betting, we want to reset a timer to the bet duration. So time in current state or here, time remaining in current state equals bet duration. And I'll generate a field for that. And then I'll break. I can't I don't think there's anything else that I want to do at that point. So when we go into betting state, we'll set our time remaining to the bet duration. Um, and let's add a oops a case for spinning and we'll do the same but we'll set it to the spin duration and break and I think that's it I don't I don't have anything to do yet in the other state um, now let's see now I want to add an update yeah. and we just want to say time remaining in current state minus equals time dot delta time Um, there probably won't be real physics for the ball just because the model that I'm using doesn't have uh, It's not separated out the the roulette wheel is part of the table So it doesn't spin if I grabbed a roulette t wheel that could spin It'd be really easy to just put a ball there and spin it around I think I'll just do uh, a fake just put a number there or something for now Just so I don't have to go spend 30 bucks on a roulette wheel that spins <laughs> If there was a free one out there, I probably would grab that but uh, figure I'll just make something that everybody else can copy along for free as well not have to go buy some asset to do it All right, so let's see we're updating we're removing some time So this is just like our countdown and then uh, when we run out of time So say if time remaining is less than or equal to zero we want to move to the next state So let's say move to next state and generate a field or a method for it and then here we can just say um, switch current game state case dot betting and we'll say set state to spinning right, set state dot spinning there we go and break and then I'll copy this for the other two states I say spinning we'll go to payout and payout we'll go back to betting and right now our payout is going to instantly go back to betting because we don't have a uh, we don't have a, a duration set for it. So uh, let's just add one. Let's, let's add a payout duration, and then we can copy this and drop it in. I really don't like having all these switches, but since there's only three and it's tiny and this isn't getting updated again, I think it'll it'll be all right. Just feels a little dirty when you start putting in a bunch of switch statements like this okay so now we're moving to the next state um i think what else do we need to do in here uh i guess the next thing i want to do is actually make the wheel spin um hopefully you didn't miss too much you should be able to follow along i'll have the whole video up too though but just a recap for anybody who's just coming in we're just going to build building a game that you can play on twitch or the other people, everybody who's watching on Twitch can play and control. Just go in and bet on a roulette game and win some credits, lose some credits. So simple stuff, but it just kind of shows how you can build in and integrate and you know, let people play things. It's kind of cool. Um, so I want to make a roulette or a wheel or something. So let's, um, I think I'll make this a separate game object. So make a public class wheel and it's going to be of a mono behavior and then on here i'm just going to have a what do i want to do like a, a start spinning and a stop spinning method I'm trying to think because yeah i think what i want to do is like start spinning when we go into spinning state and then stop spinning when we leave the state and then do the payouts yeah let's do it like that so we'll make a public void start spinning and a public void stop spinning. Actually, let's make this a public 
int. No, I'll leave it a void because stop is a command. I don't like returning something from there. Okay, so this is going to be responsible for updating our wheel. Like I said, I think we're just going to fake it and use some text for now. But there's no reason it couldn't be changed to spin a wheel. So let's move this to a new file. And then let's go into that wheel class. So control comma, go to wheel.cs. And then in here, I'm going to add a reference to a text mesh pro text. So let's just add a using statement using cam pro. And then I'll say, oops, get rid of that extra one there. So private and type ug. There we go. And call it text. This is going to be our text object in there. And then when we start spinning, we'll update it. And when we stop, we'll stop it. But to do that, I think I'll just say private void update. And I'll say if spinning, then text. Oh, actually, I don't want to update text yet. So let's create a field for spinning. We'll set it to true when start spinning and to false and stop. And then I want to pick a random number. So first, let's say current number equals uh, Unity Engine. Whoops, not Unity Engine dot random dot range. I could just type random dot range, but I tend to have system in there all the time, and then it just conflicts and comes an error. So just avoid that. And let's go negative one to thirty six. And we'll generate a field for the current number. And actually, let's um, turn this into a public. And let's make that a capital C and give it a getter and a private setter. So it can only be set from inside here, but we can read it outside this class. So we're going to update the number every frame as long as we're spinning. And then we'll say text.text, .text. it's just, or text.set text current number dot two string so this will just update the text in there and it'll stop when we stop spinning okay so let's hook this up we've got a wheel I need to go back into the game controller and um, when we set state when we go to spinning I just want to do find object type wheel dot start spinning and we realistically we should cache these things but like I said, it, it doesn't matter for this at all, so I'm just not doing it. But we should probably cache these wheels or turn them into singletons or something else. But we're just not going to do that for now because we don't have to worry about it enough. It, like I said, it's simple and small. So then in payout, we'll stop spinning. So when we start the spinning state, we'll start it. When we stop, we'll stop it. And um, yeah, that's good. So I'm going to go back over to the editor and we'll just add a text object for the wheel just go right here right click ui text mesh pro text what happened i don't know what happened there there it goes oh super laggy i'll call this wheel text and i'm gonna move it so that it's just over the wheel and i'll make it kind of big so i got these side by side and kind of see where they're at and we'll expand that out we need the center and center and auto size to crank that up and I'll probably just turn that max size up to something huge like 200 I don't know what it's gonna go down to and I'll just put zero zero for the number there Try to move that over so it's centered over here is like that I, I think a spinning wheel would be a lot cooler but um yeah, I just don't want to buy one so there we go go with the Roboto maybe we should add a, a little bit of an outline or something Oh wait, now I'm doing the other one. Let's change fonts. Let's pick a different one. I don't feel like duplicating the font. So we'll go to bangers and add a little outline. There we go. Bangers, outline. Oh, gotta enable it. Oh, point one should be good. This will look better when it's uh, not zoomed all the way out. Right here it's at a scale of point three one, so it looks a little weird. All right, so that's going to update this uh, wheel text. Let's see. I need to actually add my wheel script. Actually, where should I put that? Hmm. Because there, let's look at the wheel script one more time. Where is it getting the text? It needs to get the text. Um, 
I don't like the idea of putting this on a UI element though. So let's make the serialized field and we'll go back in. We'll just create a wheel for now. So I, I don't, it's not really a text object. It's just updating a text. So I don't want to have it on, um, on the actual text object in the UI. I think it would be more confusing. I just got a wheel and we'll add the wheel and then we'll link up the text right here. Save that and let's see, let's hit play. Hopefully the stream doesn't go to crap as soon as I hit play. I guess we'll find out. All right, it's playing and let's see if we can bet. Let's bet on like 15, bet on 12, bet on 10, bet on eight. All right, there we go. I'm just making a lot of bets. And is our game, oh, here's a question. Did I, nope, I didn't. Let's uh, stop and let's add a game controller first. <laughs> Create empty. This is that game controller object that we created. And name that game controller. There we go. Now let's try it. I'm gonna switch this to debug view too, just so we can watch the, uh, the time remaining countdown. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mint. I it wasn't running right when you typed it. There we go. Now it's up. So let's let's type some bets. And in a couple seconds, it should switch over. Let's see. Three, two, one. There we go. Picking a random number. And it was nineteen. We don't have anything to pay out winners yet though. I don't think anybody won. And now it's in payout stage, now it's back to betting stage. And the bets are not getting cleared out yet, so we should be able to keep betting and then see it kick off one more time. Once it finishes the next roll, I'll uh, switch over and we'll do the, the payout stuff. So that people who bet can actually win. There we go, spinning, spinning, spinning. And 15 is the winner. All right, so let's uh, go back into the code now and make it do a payout. So if we go to our Twitch game, go to our game controller, when we stop spinning and we switch to payout, we wanna call something to tell it to actually pay out. Um, I think that should be on our bet controller that, that does that. So I'll just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna clean this up. This is bothering me too much. Let's do this. Uh, wheel equals find object type wheel and bet controller equals find object type bet controller. There we go. Oh, I spelled that wrong. R O L L E R. There we go. So we'll clean that up. Wheel and wheel. And then here we'll say bet controller dot payout. There we go, and then we'll generate a payout method. Oh, what have I done? Undo, undo, undo. Laggy. All right, here we go. Control period, generate method. Put that semicolon at the end, and then F12 to go into it. And the payout just needs to look at the winning number. Okay, so actually that's passing a number. So int, ah, int winning number. And then we need to find out if anybody bet on that number, and if they did, pay them. So say if bets dot contains key winning number. Then we want to loop over each player. So say for each bar player in bets winning number. So this will get that list. Remember this this is a dictionary of integers for the number and a list of players for the people who bet on that number. So that's this right here. So we're gonna get each player in that list that bet on the number. And I'm going to say player.credits, and we'll just add 36. We'll, we'll round it, 36. And then um, I think I want to call like an on payout, and we'll pass in the player. Now we don't have on payout, so let's generate that as an event, or create it actually. I'm just going to type it public event action player on payout, and I'll give it an empty delegate. And then we're going to want to set up some text object here to just listen for payouts and spam it. In fact, we could probably just do that on the bets text. 
and just uh just show the wins right there i think that works yeah, let's do it here so say here, copy that and this would be on payout delete that plus equals tab tab enter and change this to player and then what i can do is just extract this whole chunk of code right here and say extract method and call this add message and then in the payout i could just add a different message let's say add message string dot format uh quotes zero one there we go with an exclamation mark and then we'll give it player dot username so this should just say somebody won whenever that happens and then we want to go back over to that bet controller because after we're done with all the bets, we do want to clear them all. So just say bets.clear. So after we've paid everything out, we clear out all the bets. And I think we're good. Uh, the last thing I want to do in here, though, is make sure that we can only bet when we're in the betting mode. So I think we'll say find object type game controller dot current, uh, dot current game state. So say if the current game state is not equal to betting return. We can't bet if we're not in the betting state. Oh, get rid of that S. We think, did I miss anything? So we should get payouts. We should clear the bets. We should see the bets appear or the, the winners appear. I think that's good. Let's see. Let's uh, give it a play. Oh, I definitely broke something. Oh, what's here? Oh, I didn't pass in the current winning number. Uh, and the winning number right now is on the wheel, so say wheel dot current number. It's whatever number the wheel ended on. Let's just look at that real quick. So remember, it's just doing an update. When you stop spinning, current number will stop changing. Oh, and I'm doing a negative one here, so let's change that. I did negative one because we have a double zero, so say if current number equals negative one, I don't want to do this, so I'm going to copy, I'll paste, and say else. And what we'll set for the text is just going to be a double zero. And you won't be able to bet on double zero. Because if you type in a zero, it's going to parse that to zero. So that should fix all of our errors. Let's play one more time. Come on. All right. I think we are in. I made the game a little bit bigger. Actually, here, I'm going to stop. I'm going to make this go full screen. Maximize on play. Let's see it. Let's see if we can bet. There we go. Game is up. We should be able to bet now. I'm going to bet on 15, 12, 10, and I'll double bet on 10. Bet on 3, 5, 7. Just pick a bunch of numbers. And we're spinning. Oh, I won something. Oh, I won on the three. All right. Bets are all cleared, and it should be going again. You have 100 credits. You can bet on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I got bet on one through nine. Should start spinning any second. Oh, the worst possible roll. Nobody wins. All right, I'll go one more, one more round of betting here. All right, does anybody in uh, Twitch or YouTube have any questions? By the way, can I answer. I know the video seems to lag whenever I hit play, which is a, a damn shame. But hopefully, it's a uh, here. Let me see if I can play with that bit rate again. Okay, 24 came up. Yeah, I don't know if anybody has any questions. i try to answer a couple real quick. I think I'm pretty much done getting this functional. Like I said, we could polish it up and make it pretty and all that. But I really just wanted to go through the process of getting something working and up in Twitch that's kind of playable. It would be playable if my stream wasn't lagging so bad. Um, we can go in, bet, you know, win some stuff. Oh, yeah, you guys are totally missing the... Uh, the numbers flashing it's going a lot faster for me too oh that's a real shame 
anyway yeah if anybody has any questions feel free to ask away um if not i think i just kind of wrap this up and uh maybe do a little mini version of this later where people can see just the code and stuff and i can paste all the code for this online too so if anybody wants to grab it just grab it out try it yourself um you do have to remember to put in your key I did that right near the beginning so just go back to the beginning and drop in your your oauth key and your channel name and you should be good uh anyway just hanging out for a couple more seconds wait and see if anybody asks anything before i end it doesn't look like it cool all right well hey thanks for watching like i said i'll um link all the code and everything so you can just grab the project uh minus the table i don't think i can put that out but i can put everything other than the table out and you can just grab it play with it uh build your own twitch streaming twitch playable game it's pretty interesting pretty fun i think people come up with a lot of cool concepts um this one was just nice and simple kept track of numbers and you know i had enough little systems that i thought it was interesting all right um yep that's it thanks for watching oh look at that if i just give obs priority the stream looks good all right, ending it for real.